Hi guys, Phil from statisticsmentor.com. Uh, so this week's class we used the idea of limits to do a proof in our stats homework. Now because I know that the majority of my students don't take a course on real analysis where limits are studied, um, let's just give you some kind of basic results here. Uh, first of all, what's this idea of a limit? Well, let me give you this expression, 2 to the n, and I ask you a question, what happens to this thing as n tends to infinity? That is what I mean by limit. I could ask you what is the limit of 2 over n as n tends to infinity? Um, well, it doesn't take you too much to see that this goes to zero. But suppose I give you something slightly more complicated, maybe something like that, and ask you where does it go now as n tends to infinity, what happens to this thing? Or I might ask you something like this what happens to this thing as n tends to infinity as as sorry what happens to this thing as x tends to infinity let's change this to n I've suddenly went to x is e to the n over n uh, what does this thing do as n tends to infinity so these are all limit questions what I'm going to do now is just lay out the uh, some of the basic rules on limits and then give you a few examples so something like this I would denote a n because this says this is something which depends on n. Alright, first we let's do the additive rule. So that says something like this. If I have a limit of two expressions which depend on n and I want to know what happens as n tends to a number. Uh, let's call that number, usually we're interested in that number being infinity in stats. Um, but let's say that it's equal to something else, um, less confusing, what shall I pick? Um, G, no, uh, K, alright. Then this is equal to the sum of the limits of the two things. And so this is the additive rule. In short we can say that this limit of a sum is equal to the sum of the limits. That's quite catchy, so you should be able to memorize that. Next, let's look at the product one. Um, here, henceforth, let's just drop this uh, n to the k because you'll know what it means. Let's just write lim. Lim of a product is equal to the product of the limits. Let's put in brackets so you can see this. So calculate this limit and then multiply it by the limit of the other expression. Uh, limit, when I have a constant, say c times my expression, which depends on a, I can take that constant out. Oops. A n, right. And then let's see, division. That's what you'd think. So if I have limit of the ratio, that is going to be the ratio of the limits. These things you just memorize. Five, um, power. Let's say we have a limit of a n to some kind of power, let's call it c, and I can take the limit inside. Uh, now we've got to be careful of this one, remember this one, and um, we'll see it in an example later on. And finally, something called the squeeze rule. So let's say we've got three expressions, which, and they're related like this, so b expression bn is n is no s is tr is uh, in between these two always for any n then if both the limit of an and cn tend to the same thing let's call it l so both these go off to the same thing and because this is sandwiched between the two then the limit that implies that the limit of bn will also equal to l okay we're only going to in our examples look at a few of these which we needed for the homework but I just presented the whole thing so that at least you can say that you've seen it sometime in your life. Okay, example, let's have a n equal to n minus 1 over n let's have b n equals to 2 over n. Okay, uh, what is the limit of oops, what is the limit of a n to the b n 
as n tends to infinity. Okay, answer. So what we do is we write down lim and then put these two things in, lim n minus 1, 2 over n. Then we use the rule that the limit of a product is the product of the limit. So I do lim n minus 1 over n, lim 2 over n, like this. Okay, where well it's understood the limits are going to infinity, so I could put that in, not to be lazy. And then we study each of these in turn. Now, let's take this first one here. Let's call this whole thing star. The first one. Now, the limit of this guy, you see, you might think, uh, why don't we just put infinity? substitute infinity into here and into here so we have infinity minus 1 over infinity like that but remember infinity um, is not a number so this kind of thing doesn't is not really good practice and the other thing is that when we're looking at limits what we're doing with limits is saying that you can substitute any number in here so long as it's not the actual thing that it is um, going to because that's you know the limit is saying what's happening to expression as n tends towards tends towards but not actually equal to this guy here so we wouldn't actually write infinity but although in some cases that you can actually solve it by substitute for infinity but the idea is that this is how we read it is that what happens to this expression as this thing here tends to that thing but not equal to it okay so yeah if we wrote infinity minus one over infinity that's more or less infinity over infinity which is not very um, helpful and it's also wrong then to say infinity divided by infinity is 1 because infinity is not a number um, it's an idea so it's you can't just cancel and say it's 1 um, infinity is just a huge number so a huge number could be like 10 million up here but another huge number could be a 100 million so in that case you know 10 million divided by 100 million would not be 1 okay so it's uh, so what do we do instead? So this is what I showed you in class, um, which I didn't kind of explain. Um, I did this. I said this is the same as saying, so basically I want to kind of rewrite this so I don't have infinity over infinity. I have something which dividing makes more sense. So I say, look, if I divide top and bottom by n, I get this. n over n minus 1 over n. Divide n over n. Okay, this looks a mess because I'm writing the whole thing out. I wouldn't really actually do this, um, which is the same as saying n over n is 1, minus 1 over n, n over n is 1. And now these two are the same thing, but now I haven't got the expression something like a huge number like approaching infinity divided by another thing approaching infinity, which I don't know how to deal with. I've got 1 minus 1 divided by something approaching infinity over 1. Now, applying the sum rule and the um, division rule if you like but it's not really needed here uh, but let's just do it lim let's do the division rule first right, I'm writing everything out in full here you don't actually have to do all these steps okay th this is the division rule just to see that you can I've applied it lim 1 is obviously 1 now what do I do through here I apply the um, addition rule so limit of 1 is obviously 1 but let's just write that in minus lim of 1 over n Okay, now limit of 1 is 1. Now what's the limit of 1 over n as n tends to infinity? This is where we can write 0. So the answer is 1. Okay. Alright, so we've got to the answer 1 from here, which some of you could have just seen intuitively, but I've done it using the formal methods. All right? And I've shown you every single step, although you wouldn't actually as I said, do all these steps. It's actually easier than it looks. Let's uh, finish up with one more. Let's consider this now. Um, lim is n tends to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n, n minus x. Okay, so in the brackets we've got something that depends on n, which tends to infinity, and the exponent we have n as well. Alright, well, so when you look at this, this is saying that what happens to the expression as n tends to infinity holding everything else fixed so in this case x will be a number 
but it's going to be held fixed and n is allowed to 10 to infinity. So therefore we could just say this is just approximate, just same as saying writing n. But so that we can be rigorous, let's write it this way so that I don't forget about the minus x, as some of you have asked me in class. Uh, we can write it like this, look. This expression is the same as saying this. you'll agree. Now we apply the product rule of the limit, so lim of 1 plus over n to the n, lim 1 plus 1 over n to the minus x. Okay, um, so let's call this double star. Ooh. And let's look at this guy first, the second term. So I'm going to find these two and substitute into double star this expression. Now this one here is easiest to deal with because you can kind of clearly see that I can minus x. I, what, what rule do I apply? I apply the power rule, so that goes in through the brackets. 1 plus lim, well, and that addition, addition rule at the same time. I've just done it all in 1. Minus x, that goes to 0, so that's the same as saying in the limit. In the limit, that is equal to 1 plus 0 to the minus x, which is for any x that's going to equal to 1. Second one, lim. I'm just going to warn you here that I'm not going to get an answer. Uh, at least I'm not going to give you an answer in this video. Okay, now, okay, because you're new to this, this is what most of you would think. Do the same thing as above. 1 plus lim 1 over n n. But why is that wrong? Uh, so let's change colour. Uh, this is wrong. Why? Because this isn't exactly, we cannot apply the uh, power rule as here because for the power rule that power has to be fixed but here it's n as well. So they're both changing. So in other words we can't, this is not the power rule. Okay. In fact we need something else uh, I can show that this is going to go in the limit to e to the 1. And that's a kind of a nice result which uses uh, um, differentiation to prove this. So I'm going to do that in another video because we use uh, we also kind of use this limit result in the homework. Okay, so that's your introduction to limits.